we can use the emphasis animations in Storyline to create almost like a looping effect and have the emphasis animation continue on. And let me show you an example of what that can look like. So on this slide, when I preview this, we'll get a little bit of narration and then this is going to be our next button which will start growing and shrinking using the emphasis animation and it's just going to keep going. So when I preview this. Hello and welcome to the course. This course will take approximately 15 minutes. When you're ready to move forward, select the arrow in the lower right corner of the screen. So we can see that arrow is growing and shrinking and it keeps doing that continuously. So it would keep going until the learner clicks on or selects that arrow. So when I close this preview, let's go on to our next slide and see how that works. There are some accessibility considerations. Anytime you have an animation that is continuous, in this case, this is really subtle and the learner is going to select that next button to move forward, but I would just use caution with any sort of looping animation on a slide and potentially give the learner a way to stop that looping. So we have our button here and the first thing I'm going to do is come up to our animations tab and add an entrance animation to it. We'll just do a simple fade entrance animation. We can now add the emphasis animations that we need and we'll need to get these to loop. So when I add my emphasis animation, I'm going to add the grow and we can see that Storyline automatically creates a trigger for that and it says that it's going to emphasize that button using the grow emphasis when they click on it, which is actually not what I want. I want mine to start growing once that entrance animation is done. So instead of when the user clicks, I'm going to choose when the animation completes that entrance animation. And we can choose things like how much larger than the original size do we want it to grow? Maybe I set mine to medium and I'll leave it at that duration of 0.75. But if I were to preview this now, which we can go ahead and do, I'll shut off that text to speech. All it's going to do is simply just grow once. It's never going to go back to its original size. So the narration is playing and then the button comes on the screen, gets a little bit bigger than it originally was and then stops. So if we want to pulse or have that continuous grow and shrink on there, we need to go back to that button, add another emphasis animation. We can see that the grow is no longer available. We already have that one set up and then we'll choose shrink and it makes another trigger here. And once again, anytime you create an emphasis animation, it wants to do it when the user clicks. But this time we're going to have it happen when the animation completes on that grow emphasis animation that we just completed. So we're gonna have it grow and then shrink. And so when I preview this time, it should grow when it enters the screen, it should fade on, grow, and then it should shrink which it did, but it isn't doing that continuously. And maybe I'd want to do something like adjust the shrink size. Maybe we want it to just go back to the original size that the object was. To have this loop, we need to have this trigger, the emphasize using grow, happen again. So all I'm going to do is just copy and paste that trigger. I can see that I now have it twice. And this time I'm going to change my, when the animation shrink completes. So it's going to enter, grow, then shrink. Then when the shrink is done, it's going to grow again. So these two things are going to start looping. And that's how you can set your emphasis animations to loop.